To complete this project, we're going to make this save button do something useful so that they can save this filtered final picture to the photo library, then edit it further, share it with their friends or whatever. Now, as I explained previously, the uh, UI image write to saved photo album function from UIKit does everything we need, but it has the catch that it needs to have some code that really just doesn't fit in well with SwiftUI. It's got to uh, be a class, it's got to inherit from NS object, it's got to have a callback using obj-c, and then point to that using a hash selector. It's just deeply wrong. And as I've shown you in a previous video, um, we can isolate that work in a class like this one here, which uses the NS object inheritance, calls a function, uses selectors here, uses the at obj-c horror, um, and it, we end up with this nice, small, reusable class. And hopefully you already have this class, image saver.swift, in place from a previous stage in the project. If not, uh, there's the code. You can go and find the, the book version of this if you want to and, and snag it from there. Um, but that's it. That's what we have so far as our code. And we're going to return back to this shortly to make it a bit more useful. But that's the basic we need, you know, to actually write an album and just print a message out. It's fine. But first, if you miss the earlier installment in this, you have to make sure that you've asked your user for permission to save photos. And that's done with a project option. You want to go to your target Insta filter, then go to info, and then make sure you have this privacy photo library additions usage description set to a string like this. If you haven't got that now, please do it. Select Insta filter up here then your target is a filter, then info, and then right click on one of these other keys and choose add row. And when it appears, add that particular row with that particular string next to it. It is required. that will be shown by iOS the first time you're asked to save a photo of the album. That's text that will be used. So please uh, do that now. Now, with that in place, we can now uh, think about how we can actually use our image saver class. And right now we have uh, code down here that creates the CG image from our CI image recipe, converts that to the UI image, and then converts that to a Swift UI image, this thing here. Uh, and so that is all fine for our current layout of displaying stuff right now. You can, if you want to, actually go from a CG image straight to a Swift image, Swift UI image that is, um, as opposed to going via this UI image, um, but we're going to do it this way with the extra UI image step because, um, well, partly because doing it straight to a CG image requires extra parameters, but um, we'll also be going to saving that UI image because that's what our function call needs when we're saving stuff. This thing has to be given a UI image to save. That's what UI image right to save photos album does. It needs a UI image. And so uh, we have one for that very reason. Yes, make it into a Swift UI image here, but we also have the regular UI image so we can write that to our saved photos album. And so uh, the first step is to write some extra code to store that value, to store that UI image, the intermediate image, so we can write it out later on if they press save. So up here, you want to add a new property. It doesn't really matter where, up next to the input image is fine. Uh, at state, private var, processed image is a UI image. This is the one that's been processed with their filter settings and their intensity slider and so forth. And that's the one we're gonna save. We'll write that one out. So we'll say uh, down here, ba -ba -da -ba -da. here we make the image, stash it away as a Swift UI image, and then store it in processed image. We'll keep a copy of it for later on. Because that's the one we want to have saved away if they press that save button. So now, uh, in our save method here, which currently is empty, our first step will be to say, do we have a processed image here right now? And if we don't, just bail out, just call return like that. Humbug, get rid of this extra spacing. Anyway, and now we can say, uh, let image saver be an image saver, an image saver dot write the photo album processed image. And that's it. That's the entire requirement for our save function. We can go ahead and try it out. I think I tried saving one earlier. I'm not sure I remember. Let's find out. Um, I will say I want to have uh, these leaves. And uh, I want it really sepia-ish. 
like that. Press save. Save finish, it says down here, good. I go to our little home screen, then go to the photos app, and that's our uh, sepia toned leaves. So it works great. We could leave it there, but the whole reason we made Image Saver into a class, even though it's fairly simple, was so we could read whether the save was successful or not. If you remember, if we just said save image nil, 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 it'll save it. It might fail, it might succeed, we don't know, but it'll try and save it anyway. And right now we aren't reading the response. We're just saying print save finished. So does it really matter if we have nil, nil, nil or not? But we don't. We have this more advanced class here um, and we can use this. We can say, I want to actually do some work here to say, did it save well or not? In particular, we can do it in a way that makes it useful from Swift UI. So we can make this thing, isolate all that painful object C selector and its objects have to do over here, but reports back to us in a nice clean way uh, what worked or not. Now, the way we're gonna do that is, firstly, to not let any of these sort of filthy horrors leave this file. We're wrapping up those nasty bits in here. At object C has no place in Swift UI, don't let it escape here. Instead, we're gonna isolate this mess where it is and instead report back success or closure a failure using closures. We'll say, yes, it worked or it failed with some kind of error. It's much, much friendlier for Swift developers. And to do that, we'll start off by adding two new properties to our image saver class. We'll say there is a success handler, which is going to be a function that accepts no parameters and returns nothing at all. But the whole thing is optional. It might not be there. And then we'll have our error handler. Will be a, a function that accepts an error, returns void. But again, might not be there. You don't have to provide this. If you don't care whether it worked or failed, don't worry about it. So now in our save completed, we can say, if let error equals error, if we got an error through, go ahead and call our error handler, passing in that error. But remember, this thing is optional. It might not be there. And so we can actually call error handler question mark. If there is an error handler closure, call it now and pass in the error. That's what it means. If there was no error, just call success handler. And again, call success handler question mark. If there is a success handler, call it otherwise do nothing. So it'll silently do nothing if you want that thing or report back success or failure otherwise. And now, Inside our safe method here, we can add those two extra values. We could say uh, image saver dot success handler is a closure saying print success. And image saver dot error handler, I'll make this thing do, uh, let's go around a little bit, print oops, and then dollar uh, zero dot localized description. That's the error we were given when it went wrong then go ahead and call write to save photo album. Like we had before, that hasn't changed. Now, we press Command R, it'll be in a much better state because now it'll let us respond to that somehow using code of our choosing. So let's go ahead and import um, this large waterfall picture here and then change this to be uh, crystallize. There we go and press save and success comes out now. That is our Swift UI closure being run now. So although the code is very different, the concept here is identical to what we did with Image Picker, right? We're wrapping up all this old school UI kit level functionality in a way that makes it get all the behavior we want just in a much nicer, cleaner, more Swift UI friendly way. And even better, this makes it more useful for reusability elsewhere. This image saver class here can now handle reporting back somewhere else, did it work or not, really, really nicely. So we're building up this really good library of code here with image picker, image saver that can go into any project. And that's the final step of this entire project, in fact, because you can now go ahead and run it. You can choose any picture you want to, choose any filter you want to, save the whole thing back to your photo library. It all works brilliantly. Good job.